Hi, I'm Femi OK. I'm Malika Bilal and you're in the stream. Today, why women could have a bigger impact on Iceland's future than ever before. The only clear winner in Iceland's snap election Saturday, women. No political party captured a majority in parliament, but women won nearly half the seats. Polls suggested the female-led pirate party, which promotes a platform of governmental transparency, free health care, and decriminalizing drug use, was on track to win a majority, but they came up short. Now it's left to try to form a five-party coalition. The situation is very tight uh, to do a clear-cut governmental formation, so there might be a lot of negotiations uh, and a lot of compromises uh, uh, in the next um, few days. So what could the future of Iceland look like with women leading the way? Joining us to talk about this from Reykjavik, Lilia Alfred's daughter. She's currently Iceland's Hi. Minister of Foreign Affairs, hello, and a newly elected member of parliament with the Progressive Party. Suna Aivar's daughter is a newly elected member of parliament from the anti-establishment Pirate Party. Anna Sigurbjorn's daughter, also newly elected and a member of the Independence Party. And lastly, Jona Solvig Elena's daughter is a member of the Regeneration Party and a new member of parliament. Welcome everybody, congratulations on being uh, elected MPs. Let me show you something that I found on Google Trends. Have a lean forward and look at my laptop here. Google Trends, this is from October the 31st. Top question people were asking, who won the election in Iceland? Good question. MPs, who won? I think, party. I think it's a very good description <laughs> that women actually won the election. Well, well, ob well yeah. obviously, it's, it's, it's what the uh, reform is party. Now that we have already, Every uh, single MP think they have won. Let me just start yeah. off with, with Lilia. That was, that was a cheap trick on my part there, but I was just curious. I, I know you'll feel that you're winners. Okay, Lilia, uh, who won? Who won the election in Iceland? I I tend to agree with you. I think women won. I, I think that the progress that we have made throughout the uh, throughout the years and decades was actually reflected in this election. So that we almost have like 50 percent of women in parliament in Iceland, I think is pretty astonishing. And I've been receiving a lot of uh, greetings uh, back and forth due to that. So I, I tend to agree with you because there was no there was no clear ma majority after the elections. So uh, I think th I think you're fully right. Sina from the Pirate Party. Well, the Pirate Party obviously made significant gains in the election. Uh, in terms of who won it, uh, it's it's hard to say. It's a very unclear position as of yet. You could put it uh, in a way that those parties that managed to form a, a coalition government will have won the election, or those who made the most gain. The Resurrection Party also did very well. A new party made 10% of the vote, even yeah. over that, which is a great, great result. And then obviously the Independence Party got the majority of the votes uh, in terms of percentages. That is to say, obviously they haven't made a majority uh, in parliament. So there are many winners and obviously, yes, women won the election in the sense that we have more women in, in parliament than ever before. Uh, we could have done better though if uh, the gender numbers of the Independence Party were a bit better. So. Uh, hopefully next time we will have a women's majority in parliament. That would be fun. So people online are also answering who won the election. But in addition to that, uh, they're also saying, were there any surprises? And there are a few answers to that as well. This is a video comment we got from uh, someone in Iceland who talked about uh, what the surprises were for him after this election. Have a listen. My main takeaway from these elections is that it shows the power of marketing and, and PR for politics. Both ruling parties, both the Independence Party and the Progressive Party, were implicated in the Panama Paper scandal. The Prime Minister, the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Interior all had offshore accounts. But only the Prime Minister seems to have suffered. He had to step down, uh, he was not re-elected as chairman of his party, and his party lost 11 seats in the election. The Independence Party, on the other hand, actually gained seats and is just as popular as ever. So Arna, you're a member of the Independence Party. Is this just really good PR? No, it's not. Uh, the Independence Party won this election. Uh, we got third of, one third of the vote. 
And I think uh, Icelanders, they voted for stability and they voted for, because they have been, have, they, they are glad with last three years with economical stability and economical success. And the, during what the video said, uh, it's, it's very clear that uh, my leader, Mr. Bendison, um, he, was, uh, he was not in any, um, um, what can I say, he was not in uh, any, um, sorry, um, he has abroad was always declared in mm. all tax returns and other official mm. uh, statements and re registered everything. He registered everything. So um, we, see, we can see that uh, when we look at uh, the election and how it went. It's not only peer. The Icelanders voted for the Independence Party and we are one of the third MP uh, for the next government. And the president has handed us the mandate, mandate and uh, we are now trying to make a ma majority government. I am curious, MPs, about the political climate right now in Iceland. So the day after the election, this is what one voter described the climate in Iceland as being like. Have a listen to this. Because we know there's so much corruption going on. Uh, of course, they've been a big part of the uh, of government for the last four years. And the, everyone seems to have just put that blame to the side. It's just uh, tradition trumps anything else. And maybe not showing up to vote, just staying behind the computer and talk a lot of talk, but not doing the walk. Jorna, let me show you something here. These are the final election results for the Iceland election, and you're from the Regeneration Party. So you're one of seven MPs right now in Parliament. What, how would you describe this political climate? Because no one's got an outright majority, which is not uh, unusual for Iceland, but you're down here with, with some of the smallest amounts of politicians in Parliament. How difficult does that make your job? Well, I, I just want to begin by by saying that uh, it's a very good result for us uh, because ours is a, uh, a new party yeah. and we actually uh, began our, our campaign kind of uh, iterating that uh, our party was a party of uh, equal rights. Uh, and we, you know, put that forward by, by, sh by uh, we say that we braided our lists in all constituencies. That is to say that we had uh, the lists were men, uh, man, woman, man, woman, man, woman, or woman, man, woman, man, woman, man, from uh -huh. top uh, to bottom. Um, and the leaders in all constituencies, uh, you know, half of the leaders in all constituencies uh, were men uh -huh. and, and then half were women. Uh, so this is something that we, we put forward very strongly at the be beginning of our campaign. And I think that was a big part of why our new very new party got such a great result from the uh, elections but you're absolutely right that uh, this may prove to be a um, and maybe a little complicated uh, debate that we're entering in Iceland about forming a government but yeah. you know everybody is just open for debate I think and so, so I, I like we'll that you, I, I like that you Yona you said complicated because I think that's a good word for what people online would might describe this as so we asked about what happens with forming a coalition government uh, this is one person's response he says I would prefer our politicians to behave like grown-ups and work together not in exclusive groups so Lilia moving forward yes. most likely there's a possibility that your party is going to have to work with Suna's party. How do you see that working? How do you see that happening? Well, I think the key thing, and I agree with the gentleman with, uh, with his comment, is that we need to work on uh, the topics and, and the policies. I think that we should not exclude any political party. The key thing is that we would agree on the policies. And we uh, we've always said in the progressive party that we can work with uh, most po political parties and we don't want to exclude anyone but it we have to be you know we we need to get some kind of a consensus on mm -hmm. on the key issues and one of the things that is very important to us is economic stability and that we can you know move forward with that in a consensus way so this is interesting because sooner i believe that the pirate party said they are not working with the progressive party or the Independence Party. That's what they said, I believe, before the election, but correct me if I'm wrong. 
No, you're absolutely correct. However, what we said was that we did not want to work with these two parties in government. That does not mean that we wouldn't want to work with them in parliament or, uni or, or get unified on certain issues. Nevertheless, we consider responsibility and taking responsibility for your actions to be very important. And uh, oh, so, 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 This, this may be political speak here, but you would not work with them in government, but you will so. work with them in parliament. What's yes. the difference? Uh, the difference being that once you're in a government, you need to uh, agree upon certain issues to go forward. You have to make a contract oh. on how you would work together governing the country. Yeah, if you are to, okay. Everyone works together in Parliament. We have 63 seats. We mm. all go to the same workplace. And obviously, we will have to work together. And nobody is excluding anybody uh, in a high school kind of sense. But we're not interested in working with the Progressive Party or the Independence Party because they are the reasons we were you know, having snap elections. Uh, we lost our prime minister, he resigned because he was in the Panama Papers. Our finance minister did not correctly turn in his taxes. This much is known, and I have to correct this for my colleague earlier on. So uh, this is something that we consider untenable as a current government. Uh, we, are dis we dissolved parliament earlier than usual, and we called for a snap election because of rampant corruption, because of the Panama Papers. So we're not interested in... Uh, working in a government with the two parties that were involved in the Panama leak. And we got well, the I election earlier. Was... Yeah, go ahead, Lil, and, and then Anna, you can come in. Yeah, go ahead, yeah and I think everything was disclosed and I think the other parties also know that. And we were called, we had early election due to this. And I think that there was a lot of uh, transparency on, on the topic because we put everything and those individuals, they put everything forward on their tax returns, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's also um, a token of our society. There is a great emphasis on transparency in all our policy making. And I think sometimes it's not being maybe recognized as much as, mm. as, uh, as, um, as, as it is. Let me show everybody at home and watching, wherever you're watching, how difficult this coalition business is. So here we have the final election results. Independence Party at 21, Left Green Movement 10, Pirate Party 10, 8, Progressive Party 8, 7, 4, 3, until we get down to Social Democratic Alliance. Now, in order to form a government, you have to have over 31 or 32 to form a government. So there is no way the Independence Party can do it by themselves or anybody else can do it by themselves. They have to have at least two other parties to come in with them or maybe more this is going to be an interesting what couple of weeks couple of months how long could this possibly take uh, anna can can i let me uh, we... just add one thing i think what the elections also showed that there was not people were not voting for like a, a government a right a government to the right or to the left that was oh. uh, rejected because the pirate they tried to form uh, coalition uh, with the parties to the left, but they didn't win a majority. So I think also what the Icelanders but are Lilia, calling I should for also point like out for our months. international audience that you lost a lot of MPs. Yes, we you did. You lost a lot. We did. So people, yeah, were, pe but people also were not happy I, with you. Yeah, but I also want to stress that the, the result in the 2013 election was exceptionally good for the Progressive right, let me, Party. Let me go to Anna, because, because she has one, way one more the, po so politicians and MPs voted in than you have. Uh, uh, really Lilia, well give, at, give me a moment. Time, let's, let's push forward. Anna, how long could this possibly take? This could, of course, take some weeks, at least two weeks, to form a government. Nothing has been decided, but we are very open-minded to work with uh, any of the parties who is willing to contribute to stability and economical success um, in Iceland. So we are very open-minded to every party, but of course uh, it will be the hardest to work with the pirates, especially because their main issue is to throw out our current uh, constitution and to install a new one and test it, who, who will create massive legal complication and problem. So we will now use next days, uh, we started today, to try to form a majority government. So Arna, you mentioned you think it might be hardest to work with the pirates. I want to uh, pull in a video comment now from a member of the Pirate Party. This is someone who's president of Young Pirates Europe. Uh, here's what he had to say. Hi, my name is Arnold Tjotorsson. I was a candidate for the Pirate Party in this past election. I think it's great to see so many women come into Parliament. Uh, half of our MPs are women, and we achieved that without the use of any quotas. Uh, it's still too early to tell 
exactly what's going to happen, but I'm sure the future is going to be very interesting. So Suna, he brings up the, the fact that there is no quota system, and yet uh, women were able to make up so much uh, of the makeup of this new uh, parliament. But this is a tweet we got from Alistair, who says they may, may not matter. He says the political alignment is more important in this case than their gender, They, I feel. They will do as their party instructs. So moving forward, how important do you think it is? And how willing do you think you are to work with other party members? I think I'm entirely willing to work with all other party uh, party members, just not necessarily in government. You know, there I feel like there needs to be fundamental ideological consensus on certain key issues. Uh, when it comes to female representation in parliament, uh, it, it's definitely important. But as you heard, uh, the Independence Party got the mandate to form a new government. And out of the MPs of the uh, Independence Party, you have seven women and 21 men. Uh, I have yet to see which, uh, which uh, you know, M female MPs would be uh, the, re the representatives for uh, government from the Independence Party, as in who would take a position of, of minister. So uh, we have yet to see who uh, from the Independence Party and, uh, you know, what kind of representation women will be getting in the new government. It depends on whether or not the Independence Party manages to form a government or if not. And then if they have the guts to, for instance, put Atma in as a, a minister, because we are finding it difficult to find who exactly would be ministerial prospects out of the independence party so gender representation in the, the government that is being formed uh is it's it's still unknown we we still don't know what it will look like and it looks a bit bleak if it is the independence party that will be you know will be leading can the I next just, government uh, can i can i comment on this i think it's uh, the last government that was in place and uh, it had a complete gender balance there were five women and five men at the table I think it also shows the election result is that uh, there is a pretty strong um, uh, women have a pretty st strong stance in Iceland. We've seen that like f throughout the uh, throughout the last decades, and I'm actually not surprised that we have like 50 percent of the representation of of women. And I'm pretty confident that the new government will also be gender balanced because this is the way that Iceland has been moving forward. And just in almost any indicators that you look at in the world, for instance, the Economist uh, Glass Ceiling Index, Iceland is doing really well because throughout the history, Iceland has taken decisions basically to uh, improve the status of women in the labor market. And Iceland has the highest labor participation in, uh, I think, almost in the, I think in the world due to political decisions like uh, subsidized daycare and also paid parental and yet, leave both for and the mother yet, and the father. Julia, uh, so, and, yes. and MPs, no gender pay parity yet. You're close. We're close. Very, you're close, but, but you're not close. there yet. Like, no, we're not. I must, I must I comment like on uh, Yona. Yeah. Yona. Yeah, Yona. Go yes, ahead. Yeah. Uh, I would just like to point out that uh, one of the first, and this is something that we iterated in our uh, campaign, is that the first issue that we're going to put forward in Parliament, the first, uh, and we've actually already written the legal act. The first uh, thing that we're going to put forward in par Parliament is a legal act on, uh, you know, making it, uh, you know, making it uh, a, uh, a law that uh -huh. companies, uh, private companies with over 25 uh, staff members, as well as public institutions and companies must uh, have the equal pay standard, the so-called equal pay standard. That means that they have to be audited um, keeping in mind, you know, to, to kind of show that they have, uh, that they have uh, equal taken into pay account for, for equal men and pay. For, for women. Well, let, yeah. let me just, I just, I just comment add some that. of the just comment. Just yes, Anna. Yeah, Anna, go, go ahead. Comment on the center of the Independence Party. And the Independence Party will always take both women and men to the table when they form a government. Uh -huh. uh, because gender equality is very high. We have, it have, of course, been a working progress in decades. But we have been in, in the government more than less. So progress has been on all parties' watch. But we have, of course, created one of the most gender equal society in the world. MPs, and let, course, me let me show you something. MPs, let me show you something. 
Can MPs, I let me show you something, something that you're very, very familiar with, but uh, it's interesting for us around the world, which is a, an annual march by women where they actually march uh, and actually say, we're not there yet, we do not have pay parity. And this happened just in the past week. Have a look at this. Analyst. So with almost, almost 50% of women in Parliament, perhaps this march will be over. This will just be the very last one. And then next year, can I when, the, when all of the MPs have done their work, perhaps it may be different. Milika, go ahead. We will see. And, and that's, that's one of the issues that people care about. Another issue is one that a couple people tweeted us about. Uh, this is a tweet from Jonathan who says, what prospect is there now for introducing a new constitution to Iceland? Another person uh, also writing in about that. This new parliament should legalize the new constitution, which two-thirds of Icelandic voters approved four years ago. Democracy is void without it. So now I'm directing this to you before our international audience. Of course, this was a crowdsourced constitution. It was developed in 2012. It was approved, but was never actually passed by the government at that time. Is this something that you plan on addressing? Of course, my party has every 20th of October since we got into Parliament reminiscent and asked for that the, that the Constitution voted for by the people would be enacted. And I'd have to say, it, it surprises me to hear Arna talk about the uncertainty or uh, the legal chaos that would result. I mean, 80% of the new Constitution is uh, basically synonymous to the old constitution. The only difference being is that we have a stronger and better chapter on human rights. We have uh, an article that ensures that the natural resources of Iceland belong to all of its peoples, uh, that also the people have a right to have their say. That is to say that 10% uh, of the electorate can call for a referendum on a law that is not satisfied with from parliament, and also that uh, people have a right to petition. This is very important, and this was voted for in a referendum by two-thirds of the Icelandic Populate. And uh, it ha this, this of promise the has been because uh, it was a really few of the people voting that actually populace. took a part. Of the so in Kremlin, well, if in we Kremlin are to change to that, the constitution. So, Sina, allow, our, allow Anna to get in. Anna, go ahead. What did you want to say? We want to change the constitution, but we think incremental changes to the constitution is a better way. Uh, to change this, instead to take everything out and write it again completely, we need to take smaller step and smaller step with everyone that everyone agrees with. And we started that these three years, and the Pirate Party went away with that agreement. They didn't want to change the constitution with us. We started and we want to finish it, of course, but we don't want to uh, change the whole constitution because we think right. uh, it's. Yeah. Um, I know, we're just at the very end of this part of the show. I'm going to take you all to our online post show. But, Jorna, I know there was something that you wanted to add to the conversation. Please go ahead. No, that's okay. I, ju I just wanted to, uh, you know, I just put the question forward to my fellow MPs whether they, would, uh, whether they wouldn't be uh, on with us in uh, in our in our party to support this legal that we were we will be putting forward as yeah. our first uh, issue that is a good question i like that question let's put them on the spot anna would you support that that bill that potential bill i haven't read it all or uh, but i think it's a good step is and it, i'm okay. really looking forward to mm, work with getting some uh, life commitment here sooner would, would you support that equal pay uh, for a company that has over 25 employees and they and there are women in those that that number of employees so it's going to closing that pay gender gap of course of course of course of course, of course of course we would also consider it very important hmm. to start lilia. looking into let me just squeeze in lilia would yes. you support that uh, I am positive. I'm positive towards it, but what I would like to see, I would like to mm. see the whole bill before I commit. Okay. Uh, I think it's very important that we mm. look at, at the bill, all the details before we commit. Very canny. But very canny politics to, there, yeah, Jona yeah, and Anna and Suna and Lia. As, as regards to the ideology, um, I'm full. Uh, MPs, you know, women's MPs. rights. Ladies, uh, yeah. it's been a pleasure. We're not done yet. We're just putting a comma here. We're going to take you all online to stream.outofzero.com to be continued. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.
Hello again, this is the Streams Post Show. We're discussing the role women are playing in Iceland's government. Before we get back to that conversation, let me show you something here from Major General. Uh, Major General says, I'm loving the panel. Women in politics, it's incredibly amazing. AJ Stream, has AJ Stream, big up. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, uh, fist bumps. Malika, where do you want to take us next? So people online are talking about the issues they care about and that they want all of you to now address now that you are in parliament. Uh, one of those issues actually is in the, a little bit of a throwback uh, format. Uh, Arna, you joined our show in 2013, September. I have that pulled up on my laptop here. And it was in a, a discussion with the then prime minister. Here's what you were concerned about then. I want all of our audience to have a look. An important issue for me as a young Icelander is that Iceland will once again have opportunities for young people to work. Iceland needs to regain its competitiveness. How do you plan to ensure that young Icelanders who go abroad for education will return home? So now mm -hmm. you are in Parliament, so I'm going to pass that same question to you. How will you ensure that young Icelanders uh, come back home and that Iceland regains its competitiveness? We've done great last three years because I think it's really important for uh, the future uh, to lower the national debt as well as keep the unemployment low. And we need to keep on that track and continue to rebuilding the infrastructure so our young people will move back home. And we are seeing that young people and Icelanders are coming back home and uh, in more than the three years ago when I was on the show last time. And I think it's really important so to keep the economical success and the stability and as well uh, rebuilding the infrastructure, especially the healthcare system, the social welfare and transportation infrastructure, and as well as the educational system. So, so and was, we Arna, need to was that the moment Arna, was that the moment when you decided you wanted to enter into politics or was it after that when you said nothing is getting done, this is why I'm <laughs> going to run? Um, it was, of course, uh, I've always been interested in politics, but like two years after the, that show, I decided to run for the secretary of my party. And since then, I haven't stopped. <laughs> I'm just wondering what... Yeah, go ahead. Who was that? Yeah, can I just add? I yeah, think Lydia. what is very important is the uh, innovation sector in Iceland. Uh -huh. We've been seeing a lot of growth in the innovation sector and the jobs that are being created there are of uh, very high, the, the, the um, value added in those jobs are, are good. And the government has been supporting that industry by introducing a bill that Pre provides incentives to the industry and I think going forward we need to think about the kind of uh, the infrastructure and the structure around that sector we've seen economies doing really well that focus on that so I think that's uh, uh, a focus point going forward uh, and also I would like to mention like unemployment rate in Iceland is three percent we've gone from basically eight to three in a relatively short time and I think it's due to the economic policies that have been implemented in Iceland We've seen a lot of uh, debt going down and also both in the public sector and also in the household debt. And I think also even though we lost um, seats in, in, um, in the last elections, but the, govern the governing party nevertheless have still 29 seats uh, out of the 63. And I think that also is a token of uh, appreciation of the policies that have been implemented. I'm just yeah, I think it's also really important because in this election uh, we were positive and the positive campaign is really important because Icelanders are having, they are happy, they are happy with the three years and now we need to build on and keep going. Um, so I think uh, the negative campaign and uh, about everything sucks <coughs> in Iceland and everything is not, it's not good to uh, live here if I can just it was not in, uh, working for, for some parties that, uh, that didn't get a good election in the end. Yeah, I also think that, you know, we need to keep in mind that uh, there were two uh, center liberal parties that got uh, very uh, good percentage, you know, together uh, us and Bright Future, we got like uh, between 17 and 18 percent of the votes being center uh, left and center right parties with a very strong liberal uh, image. So I also think that, you know, people uh, like we came on to in the beginning, that people aren't really, um, you know, going for a pure uh, left wing or pure right wing government. They want something stable and they want something, you know, that 
yeah, more to the center. I don't think that Icelanders no, are just, uh, as polarized as, as people, you know. I agree with you, Anna. It's the same thing for my party, who is uh, going to be 100 years in this um, this year, is also a center, center party. So I think that uh, the result of the election is exactly what is being described. I think what people in Iceland are also calling for is a greater consensus in society, that political parties, they work together, that they're not excluding each other and they are, you know, that they have the yeah, competence. More, to more, more consensus. The, yeah. I but find also all of this different. very interesting considering that uh, we had 26,000 people who were protesting outside of parliament. But, you know, luckily for the coalition government that is now leaving, it happened six or seven months ago, so, you know, people's anger got to, you know, uh, dampen a bit before we went to the election. And in, in terms of collaboration, the current government, the incumbent government, was in no way collaborative and actually rather disrespectful explain? of society well, I, I don't know. by men and by actually. Why Ladies, just ladies, just take a pause for a moment. Ladies, Lilia, yeah. Lilia, hold tight for a second. Yes. Hold on for a second. Yes. Uh, you're talking over each other. So I can't hear you. So it gives me a chance okay. to, to go back to Malika. Hold tight for a moment. Well, people online are picking up on a point that you all talked about a little bit, but this is clearly something that's pretty important to them. So this is Ama on Twitter who says. The future looks bright. Young women in politics, impressive. But now I want to hear about gender equality. That's also a comment that someone left us a video for. Um, this is Frida. Have a listen to what she said. We have never been this high. We, we totally smashed the glass ceiling. Um, the Women's Rights Association, um, where I am chair of, um, we have fought for women's rights in Iceland for over 100 years. And we know that... Um, our job is not done, even though Iceland is very famous for its uh, equality. Just a week before the election, thousands of women, tens of thousands of women in Iceland uh, left their job to, to fight the income inequality in Iceland. And we know our job is not done. And we will be watching very closely uh, while they are forming their government. And she's referring to videos like the one Femi showed earlier of people leaving work early to protest yeah. the amount of pay that they're not making in regards to their hours. Yona, I already heard that this is one of the first bills you want to bring up in Parliament. Lilia, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think what is so important is that we look at the policy decisions that have been taken uh, taken throughout the years. As I mentioned, for instance, the subsidized daycare system that all the municipali municipalities in Iceland provide is very important. When I was living in the U.S., one of the disadvantages is how uh, daycare is so expensive. And I think this is a key issue in Iceland. And this is what I want to do when I enter politics. I want to look at, I want to, I want to create uh, positive or good policies that will actually lead to successful conclusions. And I think that's what Iceland has been doing throughout the years as regards to uh, gender, gen gender issues. And I took my daughter, and for I, instance, I, I, in this, uh, yeah. So I think it's very important that we keep on going and we're going to uh, reduce the uh, the uh the, uh, the 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 wap, uh, the the wage gap between uh, men and women, and I, I think we're all very focused on that issue. So I'm very positive towards uh, uh, whether it's uh, proposal. I want right. to look into it in a great detail and yeah. hopefully uh, be able to improve it even further with our our our, our uh, policies. MPs, we're and we're almost thoughts. we're can almost I, out of time. So may, I, may I show I just... you may I show you something, Yorna, and then I'll come to you straight away. Uh, a couple of headlines that caught our eye about what's just happened in Iceland's elections. So one was Iceland now has the fourth most female parliament in the world. And I have to say, without a quota, without a quota. It's not like you had to vote for women. You didn't have to vote for you, MPs. It's because people wanted to. This headline here is from NPR. Women win 30 seats in Iceland's parliament more than any party. So the rest of the world are looking at Iceland and thinking, what difference will this make? What difference will almost gender parity in parliament make? In a sentence, Shauna, What's the difference? I think it matters uh, a great deal. And I, you know, we all grew up, uh, Lilia, Sunna, and Ausleg Arna, we all grew up with uh, having the first democratically elected president uh, being a woman uh, in the world. Uh, so obviously, that was a, I think it had a great impact on all of us. So we all of us know how important it is 
to have female uh, role models. Right. Uh, and I think this was a, a big part of, you know, establishing this, uh, you know, Sure. Uh, you know, I'm going to leave your sentence there because your sentence is turning into a paragraph. But I, I, I hear why you think it's important. Anna, in a sentence, why is it important? Yes. Uh, we, of course, we can be really happy where we are in, in gender equality. But we should uh, put ourselves that we will be the first country to close the gender gap, weight mm. gap completely. We can do that. Sina. I hope it means more compassion, more collaboration, and I also hope that it will mean that the traditionally female workplaces, like the people who take care of our children in daycare homes and like nurses, will get more equal pay for their work because gender, par you know, the pay, pay gap parity has much to do with the fact that we do not measure equally the jobs that are traditionally held by women and the jobs that are traditionally held by men. So now that we have almost equal numbers in Parliament, hopefully this will get more of attention. And Lilia, what difference will it make? Almost equal numbers in Parliament, almost. Yeah, no, I think it's going to put greater emphasis on the gap, the wage gap between uh, the genders. And I think uh, that's going to be the challenge that is going to meet us, how we're going to do that. And uh, I think it's also just going to improve Parliament and also the representation. So I very much look forward to working with all my female colleagues and also my male colleagues. And peace, congratulations again. Um, we're looking forward to following what you do in Parliament in Iceland. Thanks for being part of the stream. Before we go, Malika. I'll give the last word to Hal Grimmer, who says, I think that Iceland must be one of the best places to be a woman. Still, we're always trying to improve. All right. Thank you very much for joining us online here for the Stream Post Show. See you soon. Hashtag A Day Stream. The conversation continues online. Take care, everybody.